Hello, my name's David Gauntler. This is a short video version of a talk that I did at the power plant, Toronto, called Creativity Everything. That's me there. Uh, there's my website and my Twitter if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. I start off by saying a couple of things about Making is Connecting, a book that I wrote that came out in 2011. Second edition just came out in 2018. In particular, I talk about how making means you feel more connected to the world, like a participant in the world, not just somebody who can buy stuff, but somebody who can make stuff and contribute to the world in that way. And two points that I've plucked out of Making is Connecting to make here before we move on to other things are these. This point is from Rosika Parker, who studied embroidery and the role of embroidery in women's lives historically. And she says that the experience of embroidering and the embroidery affirms the self as a being with agency, acceptability and potency. Seeing a positive reflection of herself in her work and importantly in how it's received by others. And you can see how that connects with people making stuff and putting it out there in the world today on the internet, say. And also, I wanted to mention about William Morris, a uh, Victorian thinker, founder of the arts and crafts movement and an avowed socialist who still made these uh, amazing handmade books and many other things that he made, uh, which could only be afforded by rich people. You would think, why does he do that? The explanation is that these objects are time travellers from the future, examples of how things could be. He dreams of a world where we could have stuff that's as beautiful as this. He can't change the world single-handedly. But he's showing us through objects and through making things how we could have a better world. You can see when people put stuff on Kickstarter these days. Uh, well, then the, there's an ambition there to be making new kinds of things, things that are handmade, carefully crafted, or just beautifully produced, that it's difficult to make otherwise, and that's why people are using Kickstarter. This point is about creativity as an elemental force. I was thinking about this recently when I thought about the pop stars that were around when I was young. Uh, this is like in the 1980s and things were strange and different and challenging and raised questions about gender and sexuality. Sometimes they just looked plain weird. You weren't quite sure what was going on. It seemed like an experimental kind of culture, even within mainstream pop music. Strange and wonderful things coming out all the time. You didn't quite know what was going on, but it was different and odd, and that was exciting. And you could take this point from Brian Eno, that pop music isn't really about making music in the traditional sense of the word. It's about creating new imaginary worlds and inviting people to join them. And that sense of creating a whole new world that you invite somebody in to share, I think is really powerful, well beyond the world of music, to all kinds of things. So if you think about, for example, this is the uh, websites that I was making in the, the late 1990s and the early 2000s. They look cronky now, I know. But I was trying to create this whole kind of world that people could enter where there's just lots of different stuff to see and do, even to the point where I was creating things like theory trading cards or fake action figures that didn't really exist, uh, Lego sets about media theorists, just to give people a sort of different way into thinking about things and a different way of uh, dealing with knowledge and sort of having fun with it, basically, and creating this world that people could step into, like in that point. I think that's a really powerful point. Also, it leads me to think about this, an experimental culture made by everybody. That was what was so exciting about the Internet in the earlier days and still is. But these days, of course, we're aware of problems with the Internet and how that's all panned out and social media platforms. I'll say a little bit about them shortly. But I still think there's a lot of power in this idea of an experimental culture made by everybody with all these features you can have self-expression there's no clear rules or gatekeepers you can try things out it's imperfect and strange but people are able to make stuff themselves expresses something about themselves and put it out there and that's really exciting i think and we can't just let that wither and die and be replaced by bland platforms like facebook or whatever we have to do better one of the ways we need to do better is about who participates in the creative cultures that we have. And I'm thinking in particular about the fact that these days there's a maker movement and people are kind of aware of the maker movement and the idea of make magazine and make affairs. And if you wander around, look, I've got a bunch of different pictures of different kind of creative practices. We've got painting, sewing, Lego, music, 
uh, wearable technology we've got over there. That's craft and the crafty festo about the power of craft. You want to pause that and read that. You do. And jewelry making, all kinds of different things. There's so many different ways in which people can be creative. Uh, here we're over to the more robots and hardware kind of corner. Now, if you look at all of this and then we think about which area is covered by the maker movement, the maker movement is basically this bunch of things. You do have some embroidery as long as it's Star Wars figures. You do have some dressing up as long as the girl dresses up as a robot. But it's all kind of electronic, technology, robot-ish. And there's no real reason why a maker movement needs to be about that. People are often doing great and interesting things in that. There's all kinds of good stuff there. But why, if you think about all of the spread of possible different ways of people being creative, why do we especially highlight that technology end as being superior to the other things or, or the area that we get excited about? I'm not sure why. Certainly I'd like to broaden things out. There's nothing wrong with that stuff in the Maker Movement corner, but can't we embrace a wider range of creative practices and a wider range of people that like to engage in those things, because not everybody likes to be doing the stuff with robots and soldering. We're also aware, of course, that the internet is not such a welcoming place. I pulled up here a couple of uh, surveys about uh, people's experience online. This is about young people. It is worse for young women in particular online, putting your head above the parapet, saying something, putting something out there. You get abuse. This actually is for both men and women because young men were also reporting this to significant levels. And, of course, you're, you're aware of that problem about the Internet. It's People put stuff out there and that's exciting, but there isn't always a very positive reception. I remember being really struck when Emma Watson, this is now four and a half years ago, Emma Watson did a, a nice speech to the United Nations. It was a feminist speech saying that men should also be concerned about gender equality. It wasn't that radical. Um, but she got a ton of online abuse and there was a ridiculous thing where, I, I won't even go into it, but people basically making threats online and all the horrible threats that you get on the internet now. <laughs> uh, leading me to say this, I'm normally very polite on Twitter, but even I said, hey internet, I spend my professional life saying you people are fundamentally decent. You've really let me down with this Emma Watson shit. And I really did feel let down. <laughs> um, I said all these positive things about, in, for example, making is connecting about how people can make use of the internet for good. And I felt really let down at this point, which is now four and a half years ago. And, and since then, we've become even more aware of all of that kind of side of the internet, which is, uh, you know, depressing and unnecessary. And it's such a great platform. But then you get all of this and that's not happy. All of this potential creativity and yet not a very receptive environment. We need to do better. Um, I'm minded here about how Little Boots, who I spoke to for the book, she makes electronic music and she talks about both of these things. So on the one hand, she has encountered a certain amount of sexual harassment, but she got it more actually when she was in mainstream music. Um, signed to a major label and she deliberately made use of the affordances of today's technologies to be able to both produce and distribute and market all of her stuff herself now that's what she does the internet really helps with that of course at the same time it's really hard work so there's no easy solution you might also ask isn't everybody already in favor of creativity here i am saying how important creativity is everybody knows that and you'd think, well, in theory, yes, but in practice, schools, you know, teachers like creativity. The education system talks about creativity, but the opportunities to be creative in school are limited and it's difficult for schools to make themselves more embracing of creativity. And there's so much more that could be done there. You've got the major online platforms. That's Mark Zuckerberg, who thinks that he's given you a major platform for creativity uh, but we actually know, of course, that uh, he's given us a massive advertising machine which sells your data to advertisers in order to target you with more and more ads. That's not perfect. <laughs> Even in the world of critical making, which is basically a positive thing, uh, it's the sort of corner of the maker movement, perhaps, where uh, there's a particular kind of political ideology behind it. The trouble there is you end up saying that some people are doing it right and some people are doing it wrong. You've got critical makers and uncritical makers. Most people cast as uncritical makers. I don't want to be drawing distinctions between the good and bad makers and saying that some are doing it wrong. So there's trouble all over the shop. What are we going to do? 
I was thinking about this and I do my a drawing a day project, which I revived recently where I do drawings every day when I can. I ended up doing this one on the 8th of October, thinking about how we've just got to overcome this gloom in every way we can to get past the box of dull stuff in the middle to a fresh new place. I was really surprised that the gloom turned out to be inner word technology, as it says at the bottom. I never thought that was going to happen. I thought technology was the exciting thing. The next day doing my drawing, I got this saying we've got to help people find and create the tools and inspirations to leap beyond that box of gloom because that's all we've got. I think we have to really sort of double down on creativity, but more so, there's no way we're going to just like give up on doing interesting things and making use of technologies. We want to do that, <laughs> but how, you know, there's so, there's so many constraints. I think the only thing we can do is to try being even more creative, think of better ideas. We need to use platforms develop platforms for creativity where people can be creative and share stuff with others and inspire each other with the sparks of inspiration that are so powerful only that way can we get to a new place move beyond the disappointments with technology that we have at the moment to a better world where people can make and share inspire each other have networks of communication without all of the other stuff that makes us feel depressed this can still all happen because it's all still here, you know. Uh, we've still got nice and kind people wanting to do interesting things. We've still got powerful technologies that mean that we can do these things. I feel at the present we've got kind of bogged down in all kinds of problems, but we've got to leap beyond them, and I hope we can. Thank you for listening.